The topic I was given was heat spreading materials. So I've translated that into basically pots and pans and the different materials they've made, they're made of. Um, pots and pans are of course the number one essential in the kitchen, as we all know. Having the right ones can change your whole experience. There are various construction factors that will affect the performance of the pan. There are five main materials used for making pots and pans. Copper, aluminium, cast iron, um, carbon steel, and stainless steel. Each material has different qualities that will make them ideal for certain types of cooking. Copper, the first one. Okay, copper is the best heat conductor. Copper diffuses heat evenly and quickly um, not only at the bottom but all the way around the sides of the pan so that you really get even cooking all the way around. Um, another, uh, sorry I'm losing my place, ideal for delicate cooking, um, for sauces, um, any reduction type of cooking and much more. Um, the material is often chosen of course because it is very visually appealing, which we all know. Um, the downside is, however, um, it is a heavy metal that will bend and dent easily. Another big concern is that it can react chemically with certain foods, if not coated. Um, this can create poisonous compounds, so that's why it is often coated with, in this case, stainless steel. If you're cooking directly on the copper is when you get the poisonous compounds, depending on the food. Um, the Dubai, like I say, stainless steel. Um, it is also, uh, it does require maintenance, of course, to keep it looking so good. Um, copper is typically not induction friendly um, and tends to be the most expensive choice in cookware. Uh, of course, with the Dubai ones, uh, like they've warned us themselves, is it's, you've got to be careful to look out for copper pots and pans that are actually just a... Um, thin veneer of copper that don't actually uh, show the, the, the proper qualities of copper cookware when you've just got the thin veneer. You're not going to get the same performance, of course. Um, Dubai guarantees quality cooking. Um, their material is composed of 90% copper and 10% stainless steel. Okay, moving on to aluminium. Aluminium cookware is an excellent heat conductor. Um, as well as reasonably durable and lightweight most of the time. Um, it is, however, prone to discoloration and can discolor light foods and prevent, uh, sorry, and sources which can make them taste bitter. As a countermeasure, anodized aluminium is coated to prevent such side effects. Anodizing is an electrochemical process which converts the metal surface into a durable, corrosion resistant surface. A well-designed aluminium pan will spread the heat across the whole pan evenly. AMT are hand-cast and have a solid makeup with their patented, patented layers. They retain the heat beautifully. Going on to the third one, cast iron. Cast iron cookware is a good heat conductor. It maintains temperatures well due to the density of the metal. Um, however, they will rust quickly um, if not kept conditioned and dried at all times. Cast iron cookware requires seasoning to maintain its non-stick non surface, um, just like carbon steel pans also require seasoning. Cast iron contains 97 to 98% iron and 2 to 3% carbon. The extra carbon makes it more brittle. However, the performance of cast iron and carbon steel pans is still similar. To season fry a frying pan means to treat it with oil as to create a non-stick coating. This is usually done to cast iron pans and carbon steel, as I mentioned. The oil fills any microscopic holes in the metal and dries like a shellac coating, um, making the surface sealed similar to a non-stick. Since Teflon coated and hard anodized aluminium pans are um, already non-stick, they do not need to be seasoned. Okay, carbon steel. A decent heat conductor. 
carbon steel normally contains 99% iron and 1% carbon. They are stronger, lighter and more pliable. They retain the heat nearly just as well as cast iron and once they get hot, they stay hot. Great for searing steaks or crisping up chicken skin. It is stamped or spun from sheets of metal, not cast like cast iron, which gives it a smooth, a smooth surface um, which means that it also, if per perfectly seasoned, um, the pan will have a better non-stick capability than cast iron. Uh, moving on to our last one, stainless steel. This is an iron-based material, with a, but it has a built-in chromium oxide layer, which is not present, of course, in your carbon steel. Carbon steel can corrode where stainless steel is protected from corrosion. However, the downside is stainless steel is, has a lower uh, thermal conductivity level um, than, than carbon steel. Um, it has the advantage of being very durable um, while not reacting with foods or discoloring them. Since it is a poor heat conductor and prone to hot spots and scorching, stainless steel is sometimes, fe is feature sometimes features multi-ply construction where a disc of conductive metal is attached to the bottom of the pan in, aid, in order to aid heat conduction and distribution. For example, it'll have copper on the, in the inside or aluminium. Thickness of the pan is also something to consider. It makes the pan, unfortunately, more expensive, heavier and longer to heat up, but also sturdier, less likely to dent or warp, holds the heat better for searing and provides more even heating. Um, another thing that I just thought to mention is the handles. There are three different types. There's riveted, welded, or screwed on. Riveted is the strongest type, um, so that will be also a mark of a good quality bottle pan. Um, and then that's basically it. I just wanted to show you, I've got the thermal conductivity um, levels of the different types of materials. Um, that's basically the property of the material to conduct heat and it's measured in watts per meter Kelvin. So you can see if you pass that around, copper is way up top on the charts uh, on 401. Next down is aluminium at a 237. Next down is copper, a uh, cast iron at 80, carbon steel at 51, and stainless steel at a measly 16. Wow. So if you're comparing 16 to 401, huge difference. Yeah. And that's why you're gonna pay so much more for the copper, and that's why you're gonna have all the different options. Yeah. Which is a, which is a bit of a shock, I suppose. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. Sure. People love their stainless steel because their pot still looks like this after 40 mm. years. Yay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Any other questions or anything? Sure. Uh, just go through the two. This is, you said only 1% difference in the um, carbon. Yes, so what? cast iron is 97 to 98% iron with a 2 to 3% carbon, whereas this is 99% iron and only 1% carbon. That's the difference in makeup. So it sounds pretty so they're, similar. They're incredibly similar, yeah. but their conductivity is quite different. What's the conductivity? It was 80 and 50. 80 and 50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but then, okay, so then that one's cast, and this one's a, a spun or plate, yeah. plate, a yeah. plain plate. And I'm sure they use one, same as they do with the um, copper. Yeah, one plate. with the Dubai specifically, I think they said that. Um, it's a thin pan made of a sheet of iron pressed yeah. into form. Mm -hmm. Which this would be as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So I don't know if you learned anything new. Mm. <laughs>